that very much related to leprosy. Let's talk about Jake Tapper. Um, I, I came across this. Uh, Amber sent me this. Uh, this is a this is a profile of Jake Pat Tapper in the Financial Times, and this is sort of one of those things where they they kind of like ask the same series of questions of someone, and they, they they sort of give you like a little taste for like what they're up to, what kind of things they're into, uh, just what's on their mind. So, join me now as we take a glimpse inside the mind of CNN's Jake Tapper. Headline: I'm generally more of an old school rap kind of guy. The CNN author talks personal taste. Okay, so my personal style signifiers are dark suits, white shirts, and ties, and maybe a fun pocket square or cufflinks of for color. I'm a news anchor, so this is my go-to uniform. I've recently started wearing glasses on air as well. My wife bought me a Dita Statesman 3 glasses, and I find it's just easier to keep wearing them than remembering to take them off in between segments. Yeah, and this is like, of course, sort of like a buying guide. So the glasses are 535 pounds. So that's pretty, uh, you know, you know, uh, it's pretty standard there. He like he wears suits. He's got, got, well, he's wearing a fun pocket square and cufflinks for color. But what are those cufflinks? He says here the last thing I bought and loved was a pair of Grogu or Baby Yoda cufflinks. I'm mm. a big fan of the Star Wars spinoff series, The Mandalorian, and I'll wear these on air. I also have a pair in the likeness of my dogs, Winston and Clementine. I got them for my birthday from a viewer who knew that I love cufflinks. So there you go. That viewer needs to be fifty-one fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buying Jake Tapper. Uh, yeah, it's like that's probably an old person. It's better to get scammed by Toby Keith than to buy Jake Tapper or cufflinks and knowing if you're you doing know it. that Jake Tapper likes cufflinks. If that's a fact, you know, <laughs> you need help. Yeah, I I will be hitting my head against the wall to forget that fact after this show. <laughs> my grandmother won't stop buying cufflinks for CNN news anchors. What do you guys think, though? The, the Grogu cufflinks, is that is that class or swag? Is that drip or die? Drip. Yeah, yeah okay. that's drip. Absolutely drip. Uh, uh, okay, here he goes. The best souvenir I've brought home is a long story. I wrote a book in 2012 about combat outpost Keating in Afghanistan, but I was never able to actually get there. A soldier friend of mine brought me some earth from that spot, and when the book was made into a movie, my family and I went to Bulgaria for the shoot. My kids collected dirt from the set, and we combined it with the actual dirt from the camp, and my father-in-law made souvenir pens using the mixture that are a tribute to this battle, the soldiers who died, and the Gold Star families who lost loved ones. I mean, what kind of, I mean, if you're a gold star family and like Jake Tapper made a fucking pen with some dirt in it for you, how pissed are you? I mean, come on. Yeah, that's, um, that's one way to commemorate them. <laughs> Just like, yeah, his, Jake Tapper's dirt pen, that's like half Bulgarian dirt. It is even from where they died. Well, no, it's like he, he made the pen by getting one of those pornographic pens where when you turn it upside down, yeah. the naked lady's bar bikini falls off. But when you turn it upside down, the dirt from Bulgaria mixes with the dirt from Afghanistan and comes together to form a sort of battle mud that you can think about when you're signing Christmas cards. Yeah, Pat Tillman's pants fall down when he puts it upright. <laughs> when someone well, dies, they like to be remembered not by their face or their name or what they did. <laughs> But the dirt they were on when they got killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is just like Tapper has always been like had a really lame like soldier thing. But this he is has like, such a soldier fetish. It's really yeah, nauseating. Yeah. You could just send him a Tom of Finland drawing and be like, this is a drawing of my uncle who's in the Navy. He loves you. Loves how you tell the truth. Yeah. No, th uh, <laughs> this this pen contains the ashes of all of Pat Tillman's uniform and personal effects that were incinerated mere minutes after, he, after the friendly <laughs> fire incident that killed him. This paperweight features the fragment of his skull that was missing from the official autopsy. Here's some of the water that William Colby drowned in. <laughs> all right, here he goes. Um, the last item of clothing I added to my wardrobe was probably a tie. I have solids, prints, florals, wacky ones, though not Al Yankovic wacky, more conservative styles, and of course Yoda and Millennium Falcon ties because I love all things Star Wars. Cool. <laughs> What's the last item of clothing you guys added to your wardrobe? Can you remember? Uh, Grogu cufflinks. <laughs> I just bought them on Amazon. Uh, Grogu cock ring. <laughs> all right. Um, the best gift I've received is an acoustic guitar from my friend and TV host, Jimmy Kimmel. 
It's made by Rockbridge Guitar Company. Dave Matthews also owns one, and Jimmy knows I'm a huge Dave Matthews fan, so this was special. I can't really play it, but I did download the app to learn at the beginning of the pandemic like everyone else. It's just sitting there waiting to be played. So uh, would it shock you to learn that Jake Tapper is a big Dave Matthews fan? For the most part, his entire thing is like the most normal man in the world. Like, just like so normal that it's freakish. Yeah. A white man of his age who has money. Yeah. The last music I downloaded was Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon by American rapper Pop Smoke. Everyone was talking about this posthumous album, so I was interested. I'm generally more of an old school rap kind of guy. The Sugar Hill Gang, Warren G, Biggie, Tupac, Melly Mel, the Beastie Boys. I mean, that's, 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 like all, over the, that's all over their span. place. That's all that's over the place. The, the Sugar span. Hill Gang yeah. and Melly Mel. Uh, yeah, like uh, that is not in the same uh, category as uh, Warren G, Biggie, and Tupac. I mean, like the, the, sh- that, that, the Sugar Hill, that's the era of rap music that like Matt listens to. <laughs> and that, right. that's the Matt anti drug rap album. He actually collaborated with Grandmaster Flash on that one. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, the fact that he did not name drop Young MC proves that he's a busta. That would be <laughs> that would be cool if like one day one of us were like we were randomly out and about. We're in like Dumbo for some reason, and we hear this noise, like me or Will, and we're like, what, 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 what the fuck's that? And it's rappers delight. And we sort of walk over against their better judgment, and it's like Jake Tapper and Matt and a bunch of other like white guys like spinning on their heads on cardboard. Like it's just <laughs> their secret shame that they have this old like Sugar Hill Gang club <laughs> where they do like old cardboard da- break dancing. That song is like forty two minutes long. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you most just of know they're about getting people. indigestion. <laughs> uh, some guy like Jake Tapper is like hitting a joint. And just vibing out to that whole song with headphones on. <laughs> In my fridge, you'll always find hard-boiled eggs because they are the perfect snack food that's also healthy. That's that's uh, that's wretched. That's that's wretched to me. I mean, you eat that I mean, every uh, day. <laughs> eating a hard-boiled egg just as a snack every day, like it's just a healthy snack. Just pop a hard-boiled egg in your mouth. I mean, look, it's not it's not bad. It's an okay it's an okay breakfast to have. I suppose it is healthy, but I mean, this a hard-boiled eggs. Anyone? Is anyone a real fan of those just as a snack? I, li- I like I like a hard boiled egg. Yeah, but like, you know, I, one, I, I don't know. Once, once in a, a day, while. No, I would not have one every day. Yeah. That's crazy. You don't like I, I do I do occasionally get a, a hankering, I will admit, where I'm just thinking, you know what I'd really like with that right now would be a hard boiled egg. I I much prefer a soft boiled egg. And then you dip a little toast wedge in I, it. Well, yeah, but I mean, I can't make one of those. I've tried. It's impossible. You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't like getting like a nice hard boiled egg that's been in your refrigerator a little while. You sit on it a little bit to warm it up. And it actually takes exactly 42 minutes to get to the temperature you want so you can listen to Rapper's Delight in its entirety. You don't like doing that? I like the cold, I do like the cold uh, hard boiled egg. I, like, I prefer it that way. I like when I make a, I put it in the fridge, get it nice and cold before I eat it. I'm ambivalent on them, uh, but I do. Uh, what I love is a deviled egg. Well, deviled eggs are amazing. Well, yeah, sure, but that's not a healthy snack. Thing. That's not yeah, a healthy yeah, snack. Yeah, it is. Though. It has all the food groups: white, hard, soft, soft <laughs> jello, goo, onion, goo, <laughs> goo, shell, onion, crunch. Maybe crunch. Uh, you're doing it wrong. No, you should put one crunch in there. That's what doctors recommend. <laughs> Uh, the one artist whose work I could collect, if I could, is Vincent Van Gogh, and specifically Starry Night. It's not oh, terribly wow. ori- really? <laughs> It's not terribly God original. Damn, dude, getting deep cuts here. Yeah, this is like this guy is just like a census response. Yeah. like this is a very normal, average man. Yeah, and he that's almost what's said so terrifying about how how these guys are like a lot, especially the media guys. Like they self consciously seem to. Or, or it either a- attracts hollow people, or they seek to hollow themselves out, and just like be a- just absorb the 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 fat part of the bell curve on all cultural uh, things. Um, he goes here. Yeah. Um, I'd love I'd love this tranquil painting in my living room. It's interesting that such gorgeous and calm inducing paintings are by someone who had so much personal struggle. I find his work to be very reassuring. I mean, it, this is like, these are NPC style answers to que- these questions. Like he has, he has the most generic tastes and like reasons for having those tastes. He's like, Starry Night, very very tranquil to look at, but you'd never think the guy who painted it was mentally ill. 
really makes you think. <laughs> Aren't these the choices you have for paintings in Animal Crossing? <laughs> yeah, like Starry Night and the Big Wave from Japan and <laughs> with Nighthawks. Yeah, th- oh, my God. He is a quest-giving NPC. This is incredible. <laughs> my favorite painting, Whistler's Mother. I just, I just think, what would it be like if she was my mother? Jake, what are your favorite songs? You know, like Happy Birthday, Frere Jaca. <laughs> and then finally he says, if I weren't doing what I do, I would be a novelist. I really do love what I do for CNN, but my first novel, The Hellfire Club, came out in 2018, and the sequel, The Devil May Dance, is coming out in May. It's set in the 1960s Holly. It's set in 1960s Hollywood, and mystery ensues. I had a great time writing it. It has allowed me to escape, especially in these past few years, an indecent and ugly political environment, as well as the tragedy and isolation of the pandemic. To be able to walk away and spend a few hours with Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack in the middle of all of that was really fun. I enjoy solving the problems and puzzles thrown up by plot lines, and also delving into history. I like that the idea that. Um, uh, his escape from the ugly and indecent present is like a James Elroy novel. Like, <laughs> I just love to hang out with Dino and Dick Frank. Dick Tepper is nostalgia for the weirdest things. Like, he's really into the greatest generation. I don't know if it's misplaced affection for his dad or his grandpa or something like that, but Frank Sinatra is not his shit. He's like 51. Yeah, he should be like, you'd be judging by like his age profile and like what he thinks is funny, that he'd be one of those like, fucking loser uh 51 year olds who's super into the blues brothers but no yeah he wants to um he wants to have done his exact job in like 1948 i'm just imagining like my my most jake tower my most prized possession is the harmonica uh from aerosmith's honking on bobo yes folks it's bobo the harmonica i just like to look at it and wonder what it would be like to honk on it <laughs> it provides a much needed escape <laughs> from these difficult political times we live in. Honking right, well, on Bobo. I forgot about that. It probably still has spit in it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use it because you're going to get hep C. Yeah, my wife has this fantasy about me sticking Bobo up her pussy and the spit stays in her forever. It's like Steven Tyler is licking your pussy forever. <laughs> you could just hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be happy to do that. Anytime. Yeah. All right, well... Uh, you remember that uh, a little bit earlier, Jake Tapper said he was a fan of, quote, old school hip hop. Well, wouldn't you know it, in this next Jake Tapper reading series, he put all of his knowledge of rap music and hip hop culture. Um, he's brought that to bear on this satirical article written for Salon.com in February 2003 called Gang Banging in Media Land. The this new- is awesome. <laughs> the like, new- I've read this many times. It's awesome. <laughs> the New Republic busts a cap in the New York Times backside for hoeing out on Iraq. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is awesome. Like, this is like, I just want to tell people, like, a lot of you, you know, like Alex, were born in 2010. And you, like, weren't alive for this when it was like, this is what, like, all media was like. It was... I don't even really want to spoil it, but I mean, you'll you'll see, you'll 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 see. Uh, the piece begins with a, a news item quote that says, "Rival hip hop magazines, The Source and Double XL, are lock or sorry XXL are locks in an increasingly ugly feud that has reared its head in advertising boycotts on rap records and in nasty, over the top gangsta editorial slams against one another." And then secondly, paired with a news item from the following day that just says, the normally left of center New Republic penned an editorial blasting fellow liberals at the editorial page of the New York Times for demonstrating intellectual incoherence in their views on the Iraq war. Okay, so this is, this is, this is Jake Tapper now writing um, gang banging in uh, media land. This is whack, yo, said Peter P. Biddy Beinart, the much feared editor of TNR, as he slammed that morning's New York Times down on his desk. Whack. True Dat, affirmed executive editor Snoop Kitty or kicking it old school in DuPont Circle, ice skim vente latte in hand. Um, Colin Sino has been acting janky. One day it's all inspectors, UN disarmament. Then she busts a CK and disarmament is just an option. Dizam. I um, I like <laughs> this. It's pretty good, right? Air th- <laughs> it's I just pretty good. I through my teeth the first time I read this so fucking much. Like, it is. It's amazing that he was like able to live his life after that. <laughs> it's like like if I had ever written something like this, I would just like 
kill myself. Not out of like being canceled or whatever, but it's just like, God damn, this sucks. It's really from not the, good. <laughs> from the corner, boom the voice of literary ele- <laughs> of literary editor L W Cool L. Uh, I believe that that L W Cool L is his rap moniker for Leon Weiseltier. That mm. just doesn't even make sense. It's just really bad. Oh, you think he's cool, <laughs> huh? Uh, former mix master of JWA, <laughs> his lovely uh. young, oh god, his lovely young bride on his lap, a draft of Kaddish too. This time it's personal by his side. How you want to carry it, Nam San? He asked. I mean, what's with these homies dissing my pearl? Why do the old gray lady got a front? Biatch sneered. Stoop, stoop, kidding. <laughs> I can't even you read this shit. Bitch I, can't, I can't even Just read like this. Like it's a separate. I, I I do like how in his satirical piece that has like you know is about how how gangster the new republic is he can't help but include a detail about how Leon Weiseltier has a lovely young bride on his lap. I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah, probably. It seems like he's borrowing lines and changing a few words from Weezer's Buddy Holly. <laughs> like I think that's what he's recalling when he says like what's with these homies dissing my girl? Yeah, that's they from Buddy from? Holly. That's not rap. It's like a couple words switched. From the doorway strode the impressive silhouette of senior editor Lil Coddle in full bling bling. What's up, shorty? asked Snoop Kitty, her biatch. But Lil Coddle was serious. Bust an op-ed in its ass, yo. A few hundy miles north on 43rd Street, New York Times executive editor Purple Rains was rapping with Colin Sino, editor of the editorial page. How do you spell Hans Blix, a copy editor inquired of Rains? H to the Izzo, Reigns began before he could finish. Managing Ooh. editor Gerald Boyd ran breathlessly to his side. Memos are flying from his pockets. Holla at me, Reigns instructed. <laughs> the oh, bones God. in my face are hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking uh, embarrassed. Oh, man. Like, oh, my God. I Hide be, uh... under the galaxy. Fuck. I would be taking one of my baby Yoda ties if I were him and uh, <laughs> tying a knot with it. And, yeah, this is like no one you would know. even. This sucks so much that like no one would even like cancel you for being racist. It would just be like everyone, like even like, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who normally like does threads canceling people would be like, Jake Tapper, this is the gayest shit ever. <laughs> you have to kill yourself. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> You're yeah, yeah. I'm so like uh, I have like the AC running. I'm like sweating. Like this is Yeah, so my bad. face is flushing. <laughs> how embarrassed I am for Jake Tapper. <laughs> it gets better. Here he goes. Boyd presented his boss with a fax copy of the new TNR. Wishing that they could be us, so all they do is hate, he mumbled under his breath. But the truth is they don't even come close to our rate base. Reigns mumbled something about TNR owner Marty Master P. Colinsino. Oh, wait, oh, sorry. Reigns mumbled something about TNR owner Marty Master P. <laughs> Colinsino thought she had heard something about the softest, fakest wannabe gangsta in Bethesda. Don't be sweating that, Colinsino, ever the voice of reason implored. They're play haters. It's infra dig beneath us, yo. Uh, referring oh. to, uh, psst, referring to Marty Peretz as, a. Uh, uh, with Master P, uh, Marty Perez. I mean, there's a joke about R. Kelly in there somewhere, but I can't quite bring myself to make it. Hmm. <laughs> but sheezy, but those DC Bama's Reigns' eyes turned benzo red as he continued to read the editorial. Disarmament has been reduced wait, to wait, a year. Mere... The benzo like benzodiazepine red. It's good. Capture, yeah, capitalized benzo red. Like Maybe the Mercedes he means Mercedes Benz. But uh, in oh, every Benzo color. Red. Yeah, okay, yeah. Just, oh man, I thought this he was talking about like... Benzino, owner of the Source <laughs> magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like. There's a lot wrong with this, but I think like my, like the thing that really is accounting for like my body's harsh reaction to it is that it's like you know how earlier he was like, oh, I love old school rap, like you know Mob Deep and uh, Sugar Hill Gang. Kendrick where it's Lamar. like a 30 it's like 30 year span that's the same thing here where it's like in the same sentence like one character will talk like like superfly <laughs> like the next like the next it's like a more contemporary thing and it just it's so like fucking baffling like what like i can get him doing this because this is like what a guy like this would think is funny in 2003 
but like who like the amount of people this had to go through to like get here yeah it's yeah it's, somebody it's, had sure. to edit it and like and also put it on a website i i just like i i think like it, it it bears noting that like i mean it's easy to lose it in in the midst of his just just oh god hide under the galaxy like rap style uh, uh ventriloquizing of what he thinks is sort of <laughs> the way the streets talk yeah. um th- this is all in the context of like the run-up to the iraq war and like the new republics like banging the drums for like the George W. Bush's propaganda effort to like get us involved in a totally needless slaughter. That's that's or what I'm just, saying. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Where it's like this is what everything was like. It was like you're gay if you don't want to go to war with Iraq, and you suck, and you're a pussy. Uh, and I'm actually to the left of you, and that's why I support it. And it was like this. Like this was the comedy. The New York Times was too soft on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like, again, like, and the softness here is just like that their editorial page just said, like, hey, maybe we should let Hans Blix finish his, finish his job before invading the country. So it goes here, uh, fucking A. Uh, disarmament has been reduced to a mere preference to be undertaken only if or when international opinion embraces it. Fuck that shit. Reigns was livid. Respect the architect or get broken, he said. Boye Tremple and went to write went to write another memo. The TNR crew had been known for drive-bys for years. Franzen, Moody, whatever young Nizza was living Lizarge. It, like, whatever young what? <laughs> what? Yeah, what, what was that supposed to be? Uh, Nizza, Nizza. It's just two two Z's instead of a G. Um, two Z's, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Was living Lizarge, L W Cool L, and his posse would s- side wow in their P ride and turn Charlie Rose Green Room into a killing field. But this was something else. No one. There's been- another one where. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he Charlie. Just, he says someone who was actually doing some crimes in there. Yeah, there are oh, like, like okay, three like, or four Marty Marty Bur- dude guys in here. Marty yeah, Perez, oh, Leon Weiseltier, Char- was there with Charlie a Rose, year old girl. <laughs> Just all this shit going on that he was ignoring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Matt Lauer had the button that locked his door in his office. Yeah, he's, that's he's super like, fresh. He's, he's like Leon Black and Glenn Dubin there, and he's like, his like mind starts racing. He sees something weird, and he's like, "What if they were black guys?" <laughs> that's the only thing going through his head. What if they were in the Sugar Hill Gang? <laughs> But also Bone Thugs in Harmony. He's like, he's yeah. the greatest acts of evil, like a global conspiracy. Like it's all happening around him. Yo, and he yo, and dog. he's like, yo, yo, what if Alec Baldwin busted a cap? And like what, dude? Yo, you know my man uh, Alan D. Dershowitz always be having the flyest honeys around him though. Jeffrey Epstein got mad shorties up in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, he's such a player. He got his own island. Can't wait to shoot a music video there. Yeah, the goes, only pe- the only people like in this thing who didn't get like me too are it's like Judith Miller who went to prison. <laughs> like it's like yeah, amazing. This it's is like quite everyone a time either, capsule. Everyone either like got like severely me too or fucking like was famous for lying about the Iraq War. Or both, in many cases. Yeah, I mean, if it's a new republic, like, all of the above. Uh, he goes there, but this was something else. Uh, no one had been able to talk reason to either crew, even as circulation numbers for both crews went through the roof. Gran, Weisberg, Rosen, all the usual emissaries with expertise in calming northwest west side shootouts have lately found themselves shooting blanks. Matters have not been helped by the controversial Bone Thugs and Sullivan once affiliated with both crews until Reigns and he got in each other's dental work. He was savage agitating. In any case, that brings us to today, where editorials are flying and all sorts of innocents are being caught in the crossfire. Perhaps the sentiments of those of us who love both crews was summed up best in a chat room devoted to the feud. Isn't it time we learned, wrote someone called Wolfsman, we're all in the same gang. Word. That's the mic. Drop. That's, We're that's all also what gang. I'm saying about yeah. you guys. Yeah. I love how like I yeah. love how the, the the way this ends is yeah. like, hey, like don't worry about the Iraq thing. We're either gonna kill like two million people or you know, like whatever. But let's make it so the news gets along. Yeah, we're all in the same gang. I mean, I think that's the perfect way. Yeah. The, per, like, it's it just it. Th- th- this is a great reading series because it just it reveals so much. It reveals so much about the yeah. moment it was produced in and about the brain that produced it. This is, yeah, it, it, it's, 
it's the most I've ever like physically felt the 2003 internet as an adult like yeah it's, it's very... a bad vi- it's like a, vi- a, a, a an evil vibration from history coming to grab you around the spine yeah it's like it's not yeah it's a chaotic evil like that someone didn't mean to create this this is just like this is like a fucking balrog <laughs> yeah yeah it spawned from hell i'm glad i was here for the worst reading series of all time <laughs> yeah no. yeah pretty good right I don't so think, bad. I don't think you can make a worse one. I think even if it was like a second by second like transcript and just vivid description of like the Nicholas Burke beheading, I would like have an easier time getting through it. I'm gonna read the Pitchfork John Coltrane review as a palate cleanser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean it's like that was significantly more tasteful than this. It's uh I just I, I mean, I was shocked to find out Jake Tapper was writing anything for Salon, much let alone this satirical article that is, um... It's fresh. Wow, wow. Yeah, uh, it's fresh. <laughs> it's how, pretty, how, pretty dope. Like, how old was he when he did this? 51 now. This is in 2003. So, so in his 30s? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, he was like... 33 when he wrote this <laughs> that's awesome oh my god that just oh that adds so much to it coincidentally me. the age jesus christ was when he was yeah this is his executed. sermon on the mount or <laughs> on the mizount as it were <laughs> Fuck off. i mean i think oh, the god. one thing we can all agree on is that the iraq war was super dope and fresh <laughs> yeah it was fresh dude <laughs> oh my god yeah the Haditha massacre happened when a bunch of busters was trying to fucking take their lowriders and drink 40s. His house, finna. We're going to turn it into a crater and then break dance in it. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this is, the rest of my day is ruined. <laughs> yep. I have such a, I have like, I'm like itchy. Like, I feel so fucking bad. This is what leprosy feels like. <laughs> yeah, if you're a woman who's fantasized, yeah, yeah. About this. we all have fantasized about it uh, we've all fantasized about something like that but yeah like if yeah. you're a woman who has a lifelong fantasy to have their partner's uh cock uh fall off from disease and then keep it inside them make them read this article because i just lost mine yeah mine is rolling down it's my just, pant it's like, just it's, it's, it's under it's, my it just, desk <laughs> it turned to ash as i was reading this <laughs> Just the, it's like me saying those words out loud was like an incantation. I am hollowed now, Felix. My hollow stats are just through the through the fucking roof. Yeah, we have lost all our sanity points from this one. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> good article. Good article. And uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> great taste from Jake Tapper. I, I would, taste. I would, I would even classify it as the bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Like I don't even. Yeah. It's like I've seen this, you know, shared around, and I think it's like a testament to how like physically powerful it is that like no one's really tried to like there's never been like a big thing of people like trying to cancel them for it. It's just like anyone who gets through it, like they're done with screens yeah. for the day. You're <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah, you walked yeah. away. No, you like you can't you can't make a big deal out of this because like even sharing and screenshotting it is like dangerous. It's like to you and other people. Like I mean, you you can try to make a, you can try to cancel Jake Tapper for this, but would you like to still have a penis? I mean, yeah, like, no. you, just, you have to weigh that consideration. Yeah, and like please don't do that because like you are this is the real pandemic. People seeing this, you don't want to ruin people's day as it's certainly ruined mine and possibly my life. Well, there we go. Jake Tapper uh, sharing his thoughts about just meet, gang banging in media land. I just, I, I, God, I, I, he needs to add like another, another novel to the Hellfire Club series that's just all this. It's 350 pages of him writing like this. I like believe in QAnon as an aspirational thing now because like I, I, I like need him to be held accountable by a military tribunal for this. He's already been executed and replaced by a clone. Yeah, he's in the QAnon th- in QAnon mythos. He didn't even do anything. It's just this article. That's <laughs> why he's not constantly embarrassed by this because it's a different person. Yeah, yeah. This is like, yeah, it's amazing. Not only is he like not embarrassed, but it's like he still wants to be like this super public like pop culture figure. 
so on some level he was like that was cool it's just it's uh, 2003 man god it's just it, it's awesome year like it's just like reading this in 2021 feels like reading like Lothrop Stoddard on like the degeneration of the white race in like the early 20th century. It's something. an example just... of the degeneration of the white race, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, there I, we go, guys. We, we kind of have to like preserve this, dude, because it's like I do feel like we're doomed to repeat this if we don't like preserve it. You know, this was our generation's Holocaust. Well, I mean, you know, hopefully Marty Peretz and Leon Weiseltier will be dead soon. So, I mean, we, we, like the, 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 the memory of this will just be like washed away. And that then we be... can pour some out for our homies. 